For the God of the mountain is still God in the valley when they go wrong. He'll make them right. Say amen right there. Amen. Oh, I'm telling you, that's precious. That's one of my 10,000 favorites from all my day. I play that one a lot of times headed for church in the morning. Yeah. That song it just thrills my soul. We've got so much, haven't we? That's right. Turn, turn in your Bibles to Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. But we've got so much, and, and I, we really like spoil brats, kind of. Like we've got so much. God has been so good with us. Did you know there are people around this world that are Christians that are starving and hungry? You say, well, I, I, I believe that David said, you never see the righteous forsaken or receive baby bread. And, and he hadn't. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't mean it doesn't happen when people sin against God and they can cause trouble on other people. And uh, right. world dictators and, and, and people that want to run things uh, all times destroy the very people they're trying to, supposed to be helping. And uh, so that's very sad. I think of Venezuela and other places. India, a lot of places that people are hungry that know the Lord. And so we need to pray for them. Tom mentioned this morning, there's a lot of them dying too. We need to remember that. I ran across an old magazine I had. I don't get it now, but I used to get it from Fox, uh, I want to say Fox's Book of Martyrs, the, book, the Martyrs magazine. Martyrs magazine. The Boys of the Martyrs. Yes. And, uh, and I tell you, it's just a reminder as I was going to a drawer here some time ago. Anyway, Galatians chapter 4, we need to pray for one another, pray for other countries, pray for uh, these missionaries, the missionary of the week today, boy, what a, what a, a job he has in the, uh, Iran and Iraq and all those places that he's working and, and doing a good work. You won't hear about it on the news, but there are people getting saved here and there, and they have little house churches, little pockets of Christians here and there, and uh, they're, they're doing a the work. So God has not stopped saving people. That's He's right. still in the saving business. Galatians chapter 4, verse 21. Just read with me as we read through the end of the chapter. Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do not hear the law. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise. Which things are an allegory, for these are the two covenants. The one from Mount Sinai, which generated to bondage, which is Agar. Uh, literally Hagar, if you remember the name of the Old Testament. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answers to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which is from a, above, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice, thou bear, thou bearest not. Break forth and cry, thou that travailest not. For the desolate hath many more children than she which hath an husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac Cock was, are the children of promise. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Thank Amen. you, Lord, that we are children of the free woman. Oh, I praise you for that. Would you help us this morning to glean some thoughts from these words and from these verses? They're scripture, they're truth, and we know that it's what is said there. It's still going on today. Uh, the bondman is still trying to cause trouble with the free yes. and persecuting us. And even beheading and killing those sad that, that uh, those that are Muslims are, are doing so awful. But Lord, I pray that you help us rejoice and be like uh, Isaac. His name means laughter. And Lord, help us to laugh and rejoice that we are saved by grace through faith. Touch us this morning. May yes. every person grasp some wonderful truth that will help them in this walk this week. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Praise God. We want to talk about Abraham's two sons, in case you didn't notice there. That's who we read about. He had two sons there in verse uh, 22. Abraham had two sons, very clearly written there. 
and uh, they had the same father. They lived together in the same community. Uh, of course, Abraham was their father, and they lived in the same, I say home, I'll say community, because they had tents in those days. They enjoyed the same earthly blessings. Could I tell you, they had the blessings. I mean, Abraham was a very rich man. That's right. Wealthy man. Talk about blessings. They received the same teaching. Because I believe Abraham was fair to everybody. I believe when, right. when he taught, everybody came around and gathered around for him to teach. And I believe he taught them all. And yet Ishmael remained unsaved. You know, it's troublesome to me. That's troublesome to me because I meet people every week just about that are not saved. And I, you do too. And I hope you'll, you'll always be ready to have your track in your purse or your pocket or somewhere. Uh, it, it, it grieves me no end. Once in a while I'll get out. I've changed shirts and I didn't put my tracks back in my pocket. And I get into a place. And it, so I try not for that not to happen, but it does sometimes. But Ishmael remained unsaved. The Bible says in Genesis, talking about him, in Genesis 16 and verse 12, said he will be a wild man. <laughs> he is that. His hand will be against every man. That's exactly where you're talking about the Arabs and Muslims today. Every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Uh, verse 29 there said he persecuted him. You remember? It said he persecuted him that was born after the Spirit. Even so it is now. And that's exactly what's happening today. They are persecuted. Listen, if you're not, uh, if you're not going to go along with their uh, tradition or their religion, I should say, uh, they'll kill you. Now we don't do that. You know, if you don't trust Jesus and your Savior, I'll give you a track and you just move on. You know, and I'll pray for you. But they'll kill you. They'll cut your head off. And they are doing that, by the way, in several countries now. Uh, some few years ago, I read about where there was a whole host of them that they did at one time. Uh, very sad. He's still doing that today. But we need to be reminded that he was religious. Remember this, very religious, but he wasn't saved. You can be religious and not saved. We were just talking about a group. We're not going to mention a group this moment that are religious, but they're not saved. They have requirements. You have to do thus and so in order to be saved. And that's not true. The Bible says you have to receive Christ, and certainly, but I'm talking about you can't make up man-made things and say you've got to do this or that. No, it has to be Bible things. And that's what troubles me the most. I run into so many people that do not know what the Bible says about being saved. And uh, I ran into some again this week. And they said, we try to treat everybody right. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. And I grinned at him and I said, that's a wonderful thing. God will bless you for that. But I said, it won't get you to heaven. <laughs> it will not get you to heaven. And so I proceeded to tell him and leave him with a track and, and the other gentleman too. And, and you run into those all. Listen, we need to be pointing to Jesus. You know what he said? He said, what everybody says to me. And I said this. I said, if you should die today, do you know sure you go to heaven? Yep. You see, they think it's just one question. <laughs> And I got rid of the preacher just that, you know. And then when I asked the second question, I, I say this, the eyes glaze over here. They don't know what to say. If you don't have a Bible answer for that question, you're lost. And I'm talking about Jesus. You better be telling me that Jesus is your Savior, that you've asked Jesus in your heart. There's no other way to be saved. Uh, treating people right is a good thing to do, but it won't be to heaven. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, and verse 5, Paul says, examine yourselves. Where do you be in the faith? Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobates. Listen, you're a reprobate if Jesus is in it, the Holy Ghost. He said, if you have not the Holy Ghost, you're none of his. He made that plain. And, and so we need to examine ourselves. What did we do? What did we do? We get saved. Well, I've lived a good life. That, I hear that all the time. And uh, my mom was a godly woman. <laughs> I didn't ask you that. <laughs> you know what I get the most? The most? 
My grandpa was a preacher. Boy, there's more people with grandpas that were preachers. <laughs> and he's still not saved. Grandpa won't get you saved. No. He can't. Help. And on and on they go. Well, let's look at this thing. Number one, Ishmael bore the name of Abraham, yet he was not the son of the promise. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 1 says, listen to this carefully. And under the angel of the church in Sardis write, these things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. Do you know there's a lot of people that have a name? There, the Pharisees had a name that they were living. They thought they were living, and everybody around them thought they were all right. They're the ones that hung Jesus on the cross and went to hell for them. Oh, the high priest and the high priest's father-in-law went to hell for them. Could have tell you. Oh, it's a horrible thing. You can have a name that you're living. You can say, I'm a Christian. I'm a member of so-and-so church. That will not save you. That will not save you. All oh, my friends. He said, you got a name that you're living, but you're dead. I believe there's a lot of Baptists. Okay. <laughs> they got a name. They got a name. And as far as I'm concerned, the Baptists are the closest to the Bible doctrines. Listen, they, they are. I've studied this thing 53 years, and I know it's true. I wouldn't be anything else. But could I tell you this? It's a lot of Baptists. They may have the right doctrine, but they never ask Jesus in their heart. Oh, it, Ishmael was born after the flesh. He was born of Hagar. That, that uh, New Testament said Hagar. It's Hagar. Hagar, the bondwoman. She was an Egyptian slave. And it's a picture of the world being in bondage to sin. The Bible says, as it is written, uh, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans chapter 3 and verse 10. And then Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Oh, we need a Savior, don't we? Yeah. A lot of people say, I'm, I, I've been a good person. But here's the thing about it. You've got to be perfect to get into heaven. So. <laughs> it, it good won't do it. You've got to be perfect. And I'm not perfect. So you know what? I had a perfect Savior, though. I had one hey. who fulfilled every jot and tittle of the law. I mean, he never even had a bad thought. And he died on the cross, took my sins away, and praised God for that. Ah, oh, Ishmael was born after the flesh. Isaac, on the other hand, was the, the son of the promise. Born of the Spirit of God. Could I tell you he is born of the Spirit of God? Uh, Abraham was over 100 years old when he had him. I tell you he was born of the Spirit. And, and if you don't believe that's something, you think about Sarah. She was 90. You know any 90 year old women having children? <laughs> huh? Could I tell you? Any of you folks, nobody here 90, but you here over 50, you want to have children? No. <laughs> don't think so. God got to go there again. Okay. So it was, he was a son of the Spirit. The son of the Spirit. I mean, they were past childbearing age, but God the Holy Spirit did that. And he can do anything. And I asked you a question this morning. Did somebody persuade you to be a Christian? Did somebody talk you into it? That's not, that's not salvation. I was shocked one time, many years ago, many years ago, uh, there was a well-meaning Christian talking to a young lady and trying to get her to trust Christ as her Savior. And she should have known better. This is a person that I knew and I knew should have known better. And she just kept on and followed her around and followed her around. And I thought, she's going to get popped in a minute. You know, if you're not careful. Uh, that woman's going to get tired of that. And she never, and finally made a profession. That's all it was, though. Well, that girl went right back into sin. So you can't talk people into getting saved. But there are people who have been persuaded, just, you know, slick persuasion, or maybe just kept on and wouldn't leave you alone. They did that just to get rid of you. Wasn't real. Now you've made it worse. No, let's tell people about Jesus, but don't you think you can talk them into it? I thought that when I first saved. No, no. <laughs> Man, I, I'd stay with you. I, I see myself in that person, and I thought, oh, I'm just horrified. Uh, how about secondly, did you decide on your own, or, uh, you know, maybe you just want a little fire insurance to make sure you're going to just keep living like you're living, but you want you to go ahead and do that, you know, and satisfy the preacher and everybody here, but I'm not going to change my way of living. Listen, you didn't get saved. That's not salvation. Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You must be born again. That means you'll be changed. 
I love that old song that says, I've been changed, I've been newborn, all my life has been rearranged. What a difference it made when the Lord came and stayed in my heart. Oh, yes, I've been changed. Oh, you won't be perfect. You'll stumble and fall from time to time, but you'll be different. You'll not be wallowing in it like you used to do when you were lost. Or thirdly, did the Spirit of God convict you and convince you? Boy, He sure did me. And when the Spirit of God convicts you and convinces you, you, you get it. You'll get the whole thing. You'll want to get saved then. Oh, he doesn't make any mistakes. I want to tell you something. He knows what he's doing. He's very patient with you. Very long-suffering with you. Listen, folks can sit in the same church, hear the same message by the same preacher as Ishmael and Isaac. They heard their dad. Both of them heard him. As he worshiped the Lord, offered the sacrifices, and as he told them, uh, the wonderful story and all of it meant. Oh, you can be just like Ishmael and Isaac and yet be headed for two eternal destinies. One is called heaven. One is called hell. And I want to tell you something. I'll just ask people today, and people are listening, which family do you belong in to? Ishmael's or Isaac? You going to heaven or you going to hell? Everybody wants to go to heaven and most people Make up a little Jesus and let them do anything you want to. And they're just ready, you know, no, not going to do it. Uh, do you worship the Lord every day or just on Sunday, you know? I ask you, I ask you this question. Do you read your Bible every day? Do you pray every day? Do you tithe your money? Do you tell others about Jesus? You know, I could just, we could just go down the list and name a lot of things here. And, and, and if you don't have at least some of these things in your, you know, they will make a difference. God will make a difference. He will speak to you. You will do these things. Oh, my friend, if you just have such a religion, that's all you've got is religion. Number two, Ishmael was in the earthly camp, but he was not in the heavenly camp. There's a difference. He lived in the camp, we might say the camp, the home, we might say today, of Abraham and Sarah, and attended those worship services. And I believe Abraham worshiped and honored the Lord uh, you could be around spirit-filled men, too. Did you know that? Uh, Eliezer uh, there, uh, Abraham's servant that went to get the Isaac a bride. Uh, he, listen, his name means my God is help. He was a spirit-filled man. He knew how to pray. He knew how to get God's attention and get God to answer his prayer and, and let him find the bride for him. He knew how to do that. This Ishmael was around men like that. Not just his daddy. He was around spirit-filled men. You can be around spirit-filled people and still not get it yourself. Did you know that? Oh, my friend, know nothing of the spirit that they know. Oh, my friend, could I tell you? Spurgeon said this. He said, according to the birth, so will be the life which comes of it. In the case of the man who is only what he made himself to be, there will only be what nature gives him. But in the case of the man who is created anew by the Spirit of God, there will be signs following. <laughs> like that. There will be in the newborn man that which the new life brings with it. In the natural man, there will be nothing of the kind. Boy, that's a fact that Spurgeon had such a way with words, such a way of putting it. Oh yes, that, that spirit-filled man, that man that has the spirit, that man, oh, he may, he may stumble and fall and stumble, but listen, the Spirit of God will pick him up. The Bible says time and again he'll pick him up and set him back in the road uh, as he confesses his sin and forsakes it. Oh, my friend. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Or they shall be filled. God said you'll be filled. We say, I've been praying for a long time. I haven't been filled yet. But you're doing it, aren't you? You're hungry. You're blessed. Is, you're just hungry. Didn't say you got filled yet, but he said just hunger and thirst. That's what the spirit of, uh, spirit filled man will do. He'll hunger after it. He'll long for it. He'll desire it. Or oh, he may stumble like David did. He may fall like uh, Moses did and Joshua did and all the others that you can name. What is your desire? Or do you desire that? Are you desiring to be righteous, to be holy? Do you grieve when you stumble into sin and confess it? Oh, that's a spirit-filled person. He said, blessed, that means you're happy. 
just to hunger after it, just to long for it, just to hope for it. All oh, we are righteous in the sight of God, according to the Bible, because we've been saved. And the blood has washed away our sins and our names are written in the book of life. But we do stumble. But nonetheless, if we hunger for it, God said, you're blessed. You're blessed. If you want it, you long for it. Number three, Ishmael received the same teaching as Isaac did. But it had no effect on him. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? I, I believe Abraham taught both sons to say, I believe he loved them both. He did, he grieved him when he had to, to cast out the, uh, the bond of son, the bond on the son. I, I believe he grieved him. It did. It bothered him. But he realized there had to be uh, all the servants, I believe, got the same teaching. I believe everybody, I believe Abraham gathered everybody when it was time to worship. I believe everybody was there. But you know what ultimately I found out is each person has to decide what you're going to do with what has been taught. In Sunday school, in preaching service, Bible school, where it's at, you hear the teaching, but you personally have to decide. I know people today that grew up in church and they're living in immorality and I do not believe they're saved. Though they made profession. They were baptized. They joined the church. I don't think they're saved. What did you do with the teaching you got? If you think you can just ask Jesus into your heart and then go right back, living in sin, and you've missed the mark, and you're going to find out one day it'll be too late to do anything about it. He said in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 2, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. That's the answer right there. That's, that's the secret right there. Two people sit in the same service, hear the same message, the same preacher. One gets saved, one remains unsaved. What did you do with what you heard? What did you do? Ishmael didn't do anything about it. The Bible says he was a wild man, man. He was... He was, going to, he was going to have his fling. He was going to do his thing. And he did. Oh, my friend. My friend, how is it with you today? I'm asking. Uh, I, I'm just grieved when I run into people like we run into this week. And I, I run into them often. And it just breaks my heart. I hope it breaks yours, too. But you know what? It gave me some new people to pray for. Isn't that good? We can pray for them. And we did give them the gospel. Uh, the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 5, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Are you glad you came to church this morning? Mm -hmm. You ought to be in church. You know the Bible commands you to go to church. Isn't it amazing that we don't think that's a command? Let's see, he said, don't steal. Well, we wouldn't think about doing that. We'd go, why? Wow, that's a command. No. Don't lie. When you think about it, don't lie. Command of God, don't commit adultery, don't hold and on and on. And then he said over in Hebrews 10, 25, don't stop going to church. <laughs> what happened there? What happened there? You're going to find yourself having problems getting your prayers answered if you're not faithful to church, if you're not faithful with your time, if you're not faithful with your prayer life, if you're not faithful reading the Bible every day, if you're not faithful witnessing, telling us about Jesus, listen, you're going to have problems in your life. You're going to have problems in your life. My friend, oh, same teaching. Ishmael didn't affect him at all. Water off the duck's back. Just ran on. I don't need that. He was, he is a man. He's a man's man. You know, he was, uh, yeah, but spiritual man and a natural man do not love the same things, folks. They do not love the same things. The world out here thinks you're crazy for any here this morning. And you could be out there on the lake somewhere. Maybe it's a little cooper lake, but whatever. <laughs> you could be out doing something. Looking at people over there in that church. That's what the world they're passing by. Wow, they could be enjoying life like me. <laughs> I'm sure that's what people are saying that are driving by here. <laughs> oh no, they don't love the same things. 
That's why the stadiums are full on, on Sundays, isn't it? You know I'll drive back past after a while, especially, I guess, in the afternoon when I come back to church. And this, I don't want to call it beer joint, but I guess that's what it is. That's <laughs> what it is. It'll be full. Parking lot will be full around the street here. I say, well, how come you ain't got? Well, that's the pull of the world. Hey, yeah. And often, I just try to pray for those people who are in here as I go by, beg God, save them, put them in church somewhere. Maybe some of them here close as hell. Maybe some somewhere else. We're not we're not being uh, greedy or anything, but they need to be in church something. They need to be hearing the gospel. Not getting drunk. My friend, that, that pull of the world, the, the ball stadiums, again, where it's basketball, football, whatever it is, doesn't matter. There's one for every season. Then it's racing, you name it. Oh, yeah, people will be down there. And the stands will be full, packed. I've seen the cameras pan around. I've seen them completely full. You say, well, why is the church empty? That's because the world doesn't want what we've got. But we need to go out and with, in, in, in full of the Spirit of God, full of the Spirit of God, and, and tell them about Jesus. And you won't get everybody, but you'll get somebody. From time to time, you'll win someone. Oh, my friend. Ishmael had the characteristics of his slave mother, Hagar. Isaac had the faith of his father, Abraham. Amen. Praise God. And his name means laughter. Well, I tell you, we ought to be happy that we're saved. Don't you come in here with a pooch mouth. <laughs> huh? Don't you come in here like that. And don't you leave like that either. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I read a story many years ago. I just have to think of it. Over in England, they were, I think they were jackhammering and tearing up the sidewalk over there somewhere in England. And in, it was in front of a church, right close to, to the church. And one fella punched the other and said, look at them coming out of there. Not a smile on one of them. Huh? Come on, I'll tell you something. This ought to be a joy to you. You're saved. You're going to heaven. You're hearing the gospel. You're being reminded of the things that happened to you. You're being reminded of what you need to do for Jesus. And telling others, take you some tracks and get, get out there. Take some of those um, Romans plan of salvation and, and get out there and do something for Jesus. Oh, I could never do that. Yeah, but this, is, this is how simple it is. Anybody can do that. If you got an ant arm. In fact, I believe people have done it without arms. How about Dummy Brown? Is that what I'm talking about? Dummy Brown. All they can do is point to heaven. Go there. Point to hell. Don't go there. He had a great testimony, though. Oh, my friend. Oh, my friend. Could I tell you? You can do something. Miss Askew would sit for hours uh -huh. in front of Roses or one of these places and that truck. Ask her how she's doing. How you doing, Miss? Ask you. Somebody said it's going. <laughs> I'm still above ground. That's what she'd say. I was her saying every time. <laughs> how you doing, Miss? Ask you. Still above ground. She was a blessing to know. Couldn't read or write, but she could tell others about Jesus. Friends, she did. She had hand out them tracks. And some of you didn't hear me say it. But I'll say it again. <laughs> She'd go down the beer aisle and stick them in the beer cart and say, man, I'll tell you, she was something else. Wherever this need, <clears throat> somebody need to tell them. Uh -huh. I bet that makes somebody about half mad. Get on that up. There's a track right on top of his beer bottle. Hey, Amen. I bet he get mad. But you know what? Maybe somebody would read it too. I believe she's going to see people in glory. I personally, but she's in glory. She's in heaven now. But I believe she's either going to or already has seen people from that ministry. You don't know what you can do if you don't try. Uh, Ishmael had the characteristics of his slave mother. The Bible says in Galatians 4 and verse 30, Nevertheless, what saith the Scripture? All oh, we get to the sad part now. Cast out the bondwoman with her son, 
For the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. My friend, it's coming a day, and it's not far off. That's right. That those that are of the world, those that are not the son or the daughters of the promise, who be cast out. And that's going to be a sad day. See somebody go to hell that you know. Maybe somebody you were related to. I'm convinced that I'll probably see some. I hope I know it. But I believe I know people that I've witnessed to and talked to related to me. I believe we're in hell today. I believe they are with all my heart. I don't, don't see any way. There was no change. I, I talked to them. There's no went, kept on doing what they were doing, living the way they were living. My friend, that's a sad time. I believe that's when God's going to wipe away those tears. I believe we're going to have tears there. And we see our loved ones. And the Bible says over and over, when the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see them. Don't you think God's going to hide? You and I are going to watch. We're going to be witnesses to white room judgment, my friend. Why? When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see them. So I asked you this morning, and those are watching as well, how is it with you? Are you sure you're saved? Are you absolutely positively sure? Would you have to say to that man, well, I try to treat everybody right? Or like another one said, I, I live a good life. Or like another said, Jesus forgives me for everything. I can live any way I want to. I had that one time. Man, man, that's blasphemy. It's just blasphemy. And they believe it. That's what the sad thing is about. How is it? Are you sure you say? The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. The middle of the verse says that ye may know. You can know that you're saved. In fact, in the matter, it's too late when you get to the other side because you can't come back and do it over. And so God says you can know now that you're saved. And if you know now that you're saved, what are you doing to try to help somebody else know now that they're saved? We need to be busy. Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature that it means simply just gossip the good news. You tell, tell them what you did to get saved. Uh, you say, well, I asked Jesus. No, well, I, you, you tell them. And you can get plenty of literature to, to back you up and help you here. It's already been paid for. You just pick it up. It's free to you. The Bible says, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Amen. Even to them that believe on his name. That's the old story. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Oh, my friend, we need, we really need to get back to old New Testament, old time Christianity. New Testament Christianity, telling others about the Savior, trying to build up the kingdom of God. And if they go to another church, that's all right. Some of them have, as we've won them over the years. Some of them stayed with us for a while. That matter there, it does matter that they have heard of the gospel. Some have never heard it. Some have never had a clear presentation of the gospel. They have a, an inkling, kind of what they think it means just treat everybody right, be all right. But they don't know what the Bible said. You see, you and I are responsible for telling them, please give your heart to Jesus today. Amen. We're going to have a closing prayer. Tom, lead us in a closing prayer. Thank you for joining us for this week's message from Pastor Billy Balcom. For more information about New Beginning Baptist Church and our ministries, please visit our website at www dot nbbc 280.org If you have any questions about our church or comments about this video, please use the contact page on our website or send an email to crane.t at nbbc 280.org May the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace for today and bright hope for tomorrow.